Hello, my beautiful Virgo friends, and welcome to your horoscope for September of 2020, where if you're on this side of the birthday Virgos, happy, happy birthday. I hope that this solar beginning to your year brings you everything that you've been wanting, you've been manifesting, you've been hoping towards, and I hope it also brings you the continued willingness to grow into the person who can live those dreams, right? That's a big piece of the birthday time is, yes, all of these great things can come to you. Yes, challenges can come to you. But the point is, are you growing? Are you still growing is the question and I think we get a lot of help this month to kind of look at where's the growth where have you been and where are you going we've got a full moon happening in the relationship zone we've got a new moon happening in your particular sign we've got Venus moving into Leo bringing up things in the 12th house zone not to mention we've got Venus and the sun in mutual reception with this month they are hanging out in each other's respected signs so very comfortable which also tells us that at a financial of value and a creative level, you are really seeing and interacting with this walk of where you've been bringing you to where you are now. It's a full scale Virgo level healing, I think, available for you this month. And it's quite motivating, I think, especially because you are a sign that I know that if you need self-improvement or something needs to be better, you want the highest integrity of these things. So I think that this is a month where the reflection and the things that come up really make you see that you want to step up or you really want to embrace everything that has been your life thus far because it's brought you here and then you get to change or you get to flow into what it gets to be next as well. So lots of lots of good stuff this month, but also lots of good vibes for your next um, birthday year, okay? Now, coming up this month, we have got the beginning of the... Um, Autumn Equinox appointments. My goodness, I was like, what season is it? It just fell out. The Autumn Equinox appointments are down in the description um, down below, so feel free to take advantage of those. Plus, this month on the Eat and Greets, we've got lots of good friends coming over. Achuta Bava will be here. Gary, uh, Caton will be here to get us ready for Mercury Retrograde. Um, Rick Levine will be back. Becca Tarnas will be here. Fellow YouTuber Athen Chimenti will be here to talk about sidereal astrology. So if you've been at all interested in that, come on over. Kristen Caldell will be here. There's, there's, there's just a lot of good stuff happening in the Eat and Greet, so I hope to see you over there. All right, Virgos, let's get in here and talk about this month. At the beginning of the month, on the first or the second, depending on where you are in the world, we're going to have a full moon in the energy of Pisces. Now, this is going to be at 10 degrees of Pisces, lighting up your seventh house, so just across the street there. The full moon says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So I do think that as this full moon comes and sheds all of this light, brings a lot of things to light in your relationship zones, it's going to ask you the question that I look at under Pisces is where are you suffering right or where could you be of more service in your relationships if there are things if there are cracks in relationships the full moon exposes the cracks because it's like you either have to heal it or let it pass off the scene I also feel like because this is Pisces Pisces is the energy of the womb everything comes here and melds together and it makes sense in some kind of way so under this full moon I would ask you in even your relationships that are your friends your family you whatever your relationship with this divine energy is are you changing Virgo are you having to get a new relationship and a new reality it's like a new womb happening around you and the way that you relate to those things the way that you are honestly of service to those things the way you're creative with those things has needed to shift this full moon will definitely let you see which relationships need to have some adjustments okay on the fifth we've got Mercury moving into the energy of Libra this is going to light up your second house zone so now we see that maybe you are making some financial decisions. Mercury is here communicating. He's very busy, busy, business savvy, as well as busy savvy. If you've got a lot going on, you could find that in September, you're having a lot of conversations about value, about finances. Maybe you are bringing things into your life because it's a part of a plan. You're like, oh, I need a new printer. I need... Uh, this I need this in order to get this creative plan done it's also a really diplomatic energy so I do think if there are financial conversations or conversations that have to do with your value you're able to come at them in a way that is really diplomatic that is really looking for harmony that's looking for 
balance. At an organizational level, I will tell you, if you do need to negotiate, Mercury in Libra is the energy you want on your side. So make those negotiations. Have those conversations. Have honest conversations with yourself about your budget while Mercury is here. Are you in balance? Does this look like the right kind of financial track for you? On the 6th, we see Venus entering into the energy of Leo, so back here in the 12th house space. Now, Venus, wherever she goes, is bringing harmony, some magnetism here as well, but she's also trying to bring a benefit. So in the 12th house, we have all things that are hidden, things we keep quiet, things that aren't necessarily always in the light. We could have things coming from our past showing up for sure. We could have relationships, projects, ideas, beliefs and Venus as she comes in here is opening you. It's opening your heart in this area to say what do we need to see back here? Where do I need to maybe in even a project you're working on? Are you doing some research? It's like Venus is drawing the answers and the conclusions to you in a way that is going to have benefit for you going forward. One of the, the things I keep thinking of is because we start this month with this full moon in Pisces who is a natural energy of this 12th house as well I think about relationships you know is there something that's been hidden in a relationship or something happened in the past or is there something in a spiritually minded way that you're coming back to the womb you're coming back home within yourself so that you can relook at that relationship when we straighten out spiritually we straighten out material uh, psychologically financially emotionally so what needs to get back into a little bit of balance because Venus is making it easy to see the patterns of what happened here and she's also making it very safe for you to have these conversations now yes Venus in Leo could usher in someone from your past romantically. It could also usher in something that is an affair, something that has to be kept secret. And I'm going to tell you right now, if somebody is telling you, you got to keep this job, this relationship, this da, 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 secret, that's fine if you sh should choose to do that. But what you have to keep secret, you'll have to talk about eventually. So think about that as you're traveling through the month, okay? When we get to the ninth, we're going to see Mars taking his retrograde in the energy of Aries. Now, Mars is going to start this retrograde at 28 degrees of Aries and end it at 15 degrees of Aries, November 13th. So as Mars is retrograde over here in your eighth house of joint finances, you are getting a new identity. Mars in Aries is an identity. It's what do I do? What do I stand for? What's my fight? What do I believe in? What do I desire? You are under revision and investigation in this particular area of your life in the eighth house because it is a joint resource I think this is genuinely a conversation of partnership and I just don't care how you dress it up you and whatever you call God you and the people around you you with your body you with fear you with sex you with an actual partner there is an element of intimate deep partnership under this Mars in Aries that is asking for you to really step into and review if you are doing, being, moving as the person you would like to become, right? Maybe you get these sponsorships, you get these collaborations, you've got an inheritance that has come to you. Mars retrograde is going to slow you down enough to say, do I align with the desire that I have for this area of my life? Now, I do think that it requires us to act because Mars is an action energy. It's burning with movement. It does desire us and, and require us to act with some courage, right? It really does. It's courage under a little retrograde fire. But because Mars is slowed down, you also will get to look back at something in the past, past actions, past desires, past beliefs about yourself. Slow down enough to sift through which ones are real and right for you. Now also keep in mind we had maybe some past relationships or projects come back as well. You're going to say, do these still fit my world? Does this still fit what I want to be working on, right? Your spouse or your partner could be, be, oh, they maybe are looking back over their job. They're like, do I even still want to work here anymore? And that could definitely put an impact on your joint resourcing in some way, shape, or form. 
On the 13th, we have Jupiter coming out of retrograde, coming direct again in the energy of Capricorn at 17 degrees. This is your fifth house. Now, Jupiter has been retrograde, and as he's been retrograde, he has slowed the, the or there's been a delay in the gifts he's been able to give you in this area. So maybe you did start that new business back in May, and it's been like, ah, it's moving kind of slowly. Now, Jupiter, as he's out of retrograde, is going to start to deliver the gifts and the bigger benefits that he just had a slower time delivering to you. But what he did ask you while he was retrograde is in this area, do you have what you need? Do you have the training? Do you have the education? Do you have the self-discipline? Do you have the information you need to successfully and expand with some wisdom in this particular area of your life? In the fifth house, this is conception. Could be babies, could be children for absolutely sure. Are you aligned? Do you have everything you need to meet your goals with and around children, right? And if not, the wisdom to reach out and get more information will be abundantly put upon you. But also in that new business, do you have what you need? In sharing your own creative voice and expression here in the fifth house, in taking a risk in some way, do you have what you need in order to reach that goal, have enough endurance, and be successful? So as Jupiter's coming forward, the blessings of figuring that all out and having those energies come towards you and show you if there's something you still need, I think become abundantly clear. On the 17th, we've got this new moon happening in Virgo, in your sign. So we're going to plant these seeds of intention, Virgo. This is your birthday gift, right? As a new moon, it says, what do you want for the next year? What do you want for the next cycle? What do you want to see in the next four weeks in the small cycle, right? So we're going to plant these seeds of intention of what would you like to see for yourself? What do you want to see blossom in your relationships? How you show up in your relationships? The relationships that are significant and important connections in your life as you walk forward. We don't just get out there and become people. We have other people, organizations, situations that show up and they, they kind of round off our rough edges so that we can become what we would like to see as we move forward into our future. So who do you want to be for people? Who do you want to be as you show up in the world? Who do you want to be as a parent? Who do you want to be as a friend? Who do you want to be as a professional, right? And then the beauty of it happening in your sign is you know how to take those steps. You know how to make a plan to take those steps forward. So I think it's going to be beautiful over the next four weeks to see what decisions you're making around relationships and how you'd like to show up and also what you're doing around money as well. Speaking of money, on the uh, 22nd, we've got the sun moving into the energy of Libra, joining up there with this mercurial energy. So the second house is lit up. There's a lot of money talk, value talk, the influence talk of, of what you find valuable is going on. Now, the sun is in Libra. Venus is in Leo. So this is called mutual reception because Venus rules Libra and the sun rules Leo. So we see that these two energies are genuinely working together. This is that mutual reception. It's like, thank you very much. I'm happy to be in your energy. So in a way, one of the things I keep thinking is that maybe there is also a finance or a charge or something happening around your finances that you didn't necessarily see coming. It's not, nope, let me take that back. It's not that you didn't see coming. You maybe made an investment, whether that have been actually financial, or it would have been like you invested your esteem and your energy in something. And now as Mars is retrograde, and as these two mutually recepted energies are working together, you're like, oh, that doesn't fit anymore, or you're having to pay for that. It's coming back for your attention at this particular time. It doesn't have to be negative. It could certainly be something that's very positive, but you maybe made a decision back here, some kind of investment. And now as it comes forward for a little bit of a cleanup, you're able to take action on that and get it all sorted out, okay? On the 27th, we see Mercury leaving that Libra energy and moving into the energy of Scorpio. So lighting up your third house, there's going to be some deep conversations. Virgo, what do you need to talk about, right? And this could be, man, I just want to tell you what brings me joy. I want to tell you about what I want for my next year. But you're not going to have shallow conversations for the next four weeks. Deep things, deep topics, things that are in into the depth of things are going to be what's in your mind and what's on your mouth. Now, I really feel like when Mercury comes into the third house, we've had perceptions about things 
for a very long time from the third health and Scorpio will dig down in there and say what about this and it's almost like it hands you a different set of glasses it's like let's see it from this perspective so I wouldn't be surprised if by the time we are rolling into October November you're like oh I see this completely different mostly because you've had an opportunity to probably experience it or examine it from a different perspective the other thing that Mercury could definitely be doing for you here in the third house is if you have to have contracts you have to sign them you're you're doing negotiations, you're making decisions about things that are important to you, connections with siblings, all of these things, Mercury could be bringing in a little bit of a busy energy. Now, this is your ruling planet, so I think that you will connect quite honestly to this, especially in your interpersonal relationships this month. I really look forward to seeing what's happening for you with relationships this month because you've got everything you need to be successful in them you just have to decide how and who you want to be when you show up in them and then allow those allow yourself the courage to speak to those so that you can grow as we close out this month Virgo we have got Saturn coming direct again in the energy of Capricorn at 25 degrees now as Saturn is coming out of his retrograde when he went retrograde he said I've been working on this for two years with you we've been working on children family turning a hobby into something we can make money out of, adopting, um, taking a risk to have romance in our lives. Whatever it is, you've been working on mastery, crystallizing your lessons here and having it come to the next level, right? It's like this needs to level up. You've had maybe partnerships in terms of work or people. They didn't work out. You're like, I got to let them go over the last two years. So as Saturn comes out of retrograde, he's like, Virgo, did you get it? Did you get it? Did you see how self-discipline and stepping up in that next level of maturity really changes the game? Have you seen how it humbles you, right? It makes you so you got to learn something else in order to continue to be successful. So I think as Saturn comes out of retrograde here, he's asking you that question. You're seeing what he's been showing you in this area. And this area of your life is getting ready to go to that next level. So whatever you've been working on for the last couple years, which at some point I can tell you felt like doubt. This is never going to work out for me, right? Oh, what am I doing wrong? Everybody else gets this, but I don't. Some area here for you, this is Saturn coming out of retrograde saying you're capable. You are made for it. You have learned. Hopefully you have learned and now we can take and put those new actions, attitudes, and beliefs and relationships into play. We can bring some discipline into our lives that actually allows freedom and allows expansion and maturity. So I think it's quite the month, Virgo. I really think some good things can happen here, but I also think that this uh, Mars retrograde this month is going to require you to go back into some things and have a really big, brave voice and decide what you're going to do with those things, okay? All right, Virgos, I love you a ton. Happy birthday again if you're on the side of the Virgo birthday line, okay? I look forward to seeing you in the autumn equinox appointments and also in all of the eat and greets and just around this channel and the astrology community in general. Bye, Virgos.